and just walk it through just like that and then set that aside turn it over and we take this one and we don't need a socket because our hammer is bigger in the face and we just want it to be flush it's important muy importante that we go in evenly if it gets crooked it won't go so make sure if it's starting to get a little too far one side help it out on the other side we just tap it in there we just tap it in a circle that's typically pretty effective that is our bearing how easy is that super easy there's tools where you can put it in there and pop it out and do all this kind of stuff and hammering them in is not so bad but getting them out can be a pain so anyway, that's what I like to do. I just pull the uh, son of a gun flywheel out and do it this way. Because it's fun and it's easy. Awesome. So we're making some progress on this shift shaft seal. That's fun to say, isn't it? Uh, I've got a pie tin bent up in there and draining off to here because of course any residual oil that didn't drain is going to come out this way. And uh, it's a pain getting it off. I'm not going to mince words. I mean you got this big fat roll pin and then you have a thinner roll pin inside of it and things just got stuck it didn't want to come out uh, there's just a teeny little spot on this side where there's a low spot here and it's high here so I hit it you can see a teeny teeny little scratch mark there that's how I got it started and then just uh, popped it the rest of the way off and now it's good to go so once that's off, I'll be able to uh, get in close enough to be able to get that seal with the seal puller. So with the tail housing off, I've got the seal puller in there where I've got some access. Let's see if we can get some luck. And we do. This is a blind seal puller. Thing's awesome. Alright, looking at the uh, bell housing, you can see where it goes wider and it's nice and thick here where you're not going to bust it out. Uh, you take a pry bar or something and just wedge it in there then you take your uh, torque wrench take your 14 millimeter socket set it to tighten set it to 72 newton meters or 53 foot pound garbage units there we go all right just click them down you want to do it in a star pattern like i say i already did these but do uh four of them that are opposite like this and then go through and do all the others in between so you get the idea if you don't brace it with a pry bar what happens is the engine just rotates spin it see like that so you put your pry bar in there voila when it comes time to put in uh, the flex plate you just line it up on the things and it's 16 newton meters or 12 foot-pound garbage units. So the first thing you do is look at your disc and it'll say flywheel side right there. Flywheel side, found it. So you take this, just put your pilot tool in there. Man, this is so hard to do at the end of the day without music playing. But if I play music then I can't do a video because World Music Group will be pissed. Hooray. So you got the alignment pins and the bolts, so just find where it lines up, it makes everything happy. Ooh, he's so happy. Just take your bolts, put them in there. Dude, I have no access once I get the camera in there. I'm like leaning clear out from the cheap seats to get this in. So just go through like this and uh, put the bolts in by hand. You want to tighten these especially opposites and you want to move the pilot tool up and down and see what the range of motion is for that disc find your range of motion here get in the middle find your range of motion here get in the middle and then snug it down a lot of the more experienced guys don't even use a pilot tool they'll just look in through the outsides and make sure that the gap is the same here here and here on the three different sides or just look through there at the disc and make sure that it's centered in the fingers but a pilot tool is a good way to start so once you've got this torque down to 12 foot-pounds all the way around going opposite sides, all six bolts, you should be able to pull this in and out pretty easily. I mean if it's kind of suction fit or burps when you pull it out, that's okay. But it shouldn't drag at all. It should be real smooth. Um, now what this, 
basically when you go to put the transmission on you want everything to go smooth and as easy as possible you don't want to have to fight while you're holding this big heavy sucker up it's full of you know really heavy steel gears and shafts and all that kind of stuff so you want to make sure it's good to go so you got our throw out bearing on uh, we have the new sleeve driven on there's a little lip on the back side of it um, you just take a screwdriver and a hammer and tap this side and the other side gently making sure that it's moving so that you don't uh, mar it because you want you want it to be able to go all the way back as it needs to uh, take a little packet of grease that comes with your clutch set and smear that uh, temperature uh, and dust resistant grease all over the front of this and also around this where your bearings going to slide so that it can slide freely and uh, basically any leftover I put on the front of these uh, teeth and also on the front of this so that when I go to put the clutch in it'll go in smooth if you want to grease up the little alignment tabs the dowels there's one here and then there's another one on the other side that's a good idea too that way you don't have to fight for your millimeters getting this thing back together. A lot of transmissions in cars, I'll just go ahead and pick them up and put them in. Even on a lot of trucks, I'll do the same thing. Um, the super ones are a little bit long and heavy. So I'm not a sissy or nothing, but this is, this is the way to do this, is use a transmission jack. Uh, when you have a transmission jack, you can control the angle. You can take your time. You're not under stress. You can just do a good job. At the back end you got those long studs on the engine and so it's nice to be able to get those just right on there so basically if you take your uh, foam pad or whatever and support the engine so it's tipped back a little bit you use a transmission jack this really isn't too bad if you don't have one this is a great time great excuse to get one mine's not going in so I'm getting a different perspective than just being under there grunting and working at it so I'm looking at the gap that's right here and this gap is bigger at the right side than the left and it's bigger at the top than it is at the bottom so I need the tail to go up into the driver's side so as you can see by the bolts in there I've got the transmission in I'll we'll end up having to stack some wood blocks and get the chain going but uh, can pull the chain off now because it's in there I've got all the mounts secured I wound up having to take all this bracketry off for two reasons. One, it was too much weight on the tail of this thing. It kept dragging it off the back of the jack. And the other thing was it was just adding a bunch of weight. And uh, it wouldn't allow the transmission to go up like those blocks allow it to go up. And it was just fighting me, so I had to get rid of that. Even with the transmission jack, these can be a pain in the neck. So go ahead and lower this. Whoop. So the next thing you want to do, um, what I do is I get these bottom bolts on, or nuts, onto the studs, and then just kind of rock it and work it around in a circle until it takes in. It seems like it's never going to go and it's just so impossible, but uh, you just got to look and make sure that these surfaces are parallel, the back of the engine and the front of the transmission, and then make sure that their angles are, you know, that, that basically makes sure that the angles are correct and then just uh, get it to scoot in. And if it's uh, load bearing on these studs, those things won't allow it to go because it'll sit on the threads and create too much friction. So I've got my shift linkage uh, put back on. You got to make sure to do that top one first, as otherwise it gets blocked by the stabilizer. I got the stabilizer block in there. That thing is mushy. That bushing, there's aftermarket ones would be a lot better for that. It's a good idea to look at your transmission mount. Um, it, when they fail, they fail in this little part right here. Carrier bearings done. Um, we've got all of our bolts tightened up here. You can use a pry bar and uh, stick it through here or a long screwdriver to torque these down. Uh, make sure to not do them on the same side like this. Opposite sides to this side and then the one clear back here and then back around to this one here and then this one up here. So that you go just like putting a wheel or a tire on. You want to do the opposites. Uh, we still have the exhaust to do. I've got all of these done up on the bell housing and uh, we're starting to really come together. So we're back up on top. Uh, back on top again, yeah! So what we're going to do is we're going to tighten down the bolt in the top of the starter and then hook up the uh, signal wire. I love that forward backward switch on the Mac ones. It's nice. When you get close, there's a tab to hold this up. Make sure it lands in the hole. 
like that. Work it down. Point set match. All right. So reach in, get the signal wire, and plug it in, and keep on trucking. Next thing we want to do is get this torque strut mount tightened down. So you want to tighten it on the nut side. You'll notice that I still don't have a slave cylinder in there yet. So I'll go ahead and uh, pull it with a wrench on the other side. Torque it down by hand. Just hold it with this side. Alrighty. Nice and snug. Awesome. So the next thing we can do is the slave cylinder. That pushed in there. We've got our bolts nice and handy, ready to go here. And this thing's really starting to come together fast. Took forever doing that dumb seal for the input shaft. Or uh, shift shaft, excuse me. There's all this talk about doing all these different seals and rear mains. I'm just like, dude, it's not leaking. I wouldn't mess with it. And you say Subaru seals are typically pretty good. Usually not an issue. So we got this all lined up. I typically treat these the same way that I do uh, timing tensioner. Like all super ones, they always say you get a pry bar and you pry it forward from behind when you're doing the tensioner for the timing. It's an automatic hydraulic tensioner. Well, it's a hydraulic apparatus. And uh, let's try to get it as far as possible so that you get the maximum amount of throw allowable. Maybe buy you a week or two before it fails. It's just like a dumb superstition, but it's what I do. Go ahead and hook up our wires again. Get them clicked into place. So I need to figure out where this ground wire went. When I took the transmission out, it snapped it off. I need to get a new connector onto that and get it put in. Not sure exactly where it went, but this ends a 10 millimeter. So I've got an automatic transmission uh, Subaru outside and it just goes to the bottom of the mount here. So the best I can figure is that this came from uh, the fastener down there. Because it, it snapped off, it was hanging down on this side, and it went when the transmission came down. So I know it just needs to ground to the transmission, that's mission to be accomplished, so that's what we're going to do. Go ahead and, oop, a little too high. Clip that. Looks like I'm going digging. I'll tell you what, I never ever get used to working around a tripod. It's like I want you guys to have first row seat, be able to see what's going on. But dang, I gotta get used to this. All right, so we're in. So we'll take off that uh, nut and put it back up in there. I scouted it out, checked it out to see if there's anything sticking off of it. I can't find a fastener anywhere. There should be a smoking gun, you know, a ring on something somewhere, but I'm not seeing it. This will work. Oh, this seems annoying. I don't know if it's in my head or what. This seems just being a pain. It's funny for such a little goofy thing to be such a pain. But it happens to the best of us. Especially at the end of a longer project, you're susceptible to that kind of thing. So I got the CV axles put in. Uh, you put this end in first. And this has some slip in it, so you use this as a slide hammer to knock that in the rest of the way. Put it in gently, put a little oil on the seal, and then uh, twist it till it keys, and then knock, knock, knock with the axle. And then this one, you want to angle it down this way and move the strut. You see the strut right here? You move that uh, to the side so that you can angle this down and get it into the uh, spindle steering knuckle. And then from that, it is the spindle. <laughs> So you put it in the steering knuckle, line up your struts, remember that top one, you twist it until the rust line matches on the strut. So here's the CV axle nut, it's already been torqued down, um, but basically you just take a chisel, and you don't want to put it clear up, in, some guys do it like this, that's fine, go ahead and do it like that, I don't care. Uh, but I just like to put just the end of it in there, and that way it helps it to just sit down in there. 
one good hard knock like that and it's seated in there real good. This keeps the nut from coming undone. If you don't do this, this is like the safety backup device. If you don't do this and it works loose because your bearing's getting old or whatever, basically if you don't have something retaining it, this comes off and then the whole steering knuckle, everything comes apart. And then the rotor starts to wobble. It causes your brake uh, response to be bad because with the rotor going back and forth, it opens up the caliper and that's beyond what your master cylinder can put back. So you won't have brakes. Uh, steering control will be minimalized and basically this will be the only thing holding your wheel and your rotor and everything together because the part of uh, the part of the hub bearing assembly or the hub that everything's bolted to here will separate in the middle where the bearing is the only thing that's holding those two halves together you know this side to the back side bearing cup is just basically this uh, CV axle spindle and the spindle nut. This top bolt's a cam bolt. Now what I want to draw your attention to is the fine line right here. As I uh, turn this, you can see how this goes in and out, and that affects your camber, which is the way the top of the wheel leans in or out. So what you want to do is you want to turn that until, so I got to turn it and push it just a little bit at the top to get it to where that disappears so that the rust line matches where it used to be. So I'm actually holding it in with the uh, wrench and I'm pushing forward with the impact gun, pushing against the car. You want to get that to match just exactly where it was because if you align it before and you put it exactly the way it was, the school of thought is that your uh, camber will be good again because that's a part of the alignment that's messed up when you pull a CV axle in or out. And if you affect the camber, it can also affect some other things in the alignment too. So there's that for you. So when we took this apart, uh, the bolts just snapped off. They're just really, really rusted and they're just done. So you got some new bolts and uh, it's nuts. And you got a new flange gasket because the flange gasket was sevenfold as bad as the uh, hello as the bolts were. Well, these bags don't lack in strength at all, do they? I guess when you pay three dollars a nut, you get really good bags to put them in. So our new one, our old one, I'll show it to you, but it's in a million pieces. Had to chisel it out of here and had to chisel it off of here. It just totally came apart in the middle. So this is what the new flange gasket looks like. Uh, the way you put these on is you put it on to uh, the pipe first. Let's kind of give it a good squeeze, knock it on. Why it's important to get the old one off so otherwise it's really a real pain in the neck to get these on all right so I've got that nice and pressed on lift this up to it and this is uh, on hanger so it'll swing forward and backward this back pipe I'll lift it into place I'll take my fancy new bolts the bolts are five bucks each and they're probably worth it it's hard to make new ones Let's push that in. We'll take our three dollar nut, put that into place, just kind of hold it for now. We'll take our bolt and do the same thing on the other side. It's important that you tighten these on evenly, evenly, stevenly, because otherwise uh, your pipe will be crooked and it'll wear into it and it'll leak. The whole idea here is to not leak, so. You can look at how far the threads are sticking out, and that's typically a good rule of thumb to get started. So then you want to eyeball it and just kind of check. You also want to look at it from the side. I can tell mine needs to go this way just a little bit, just to settle in like that. And we'll carry on in our merry little way. But typically when you go take these off, you have to hold on to that 14. This is a 12 on this side with the nuts. You usually don't have to hold them other than just with your finger, the spring tension and the all the surface area holds it against here for you pretty well. This thing's basically held on by a spring. You just bottom these out, snug them down, and you're good. There we go. Like I say, but if you don't settle it in, if you don't check it out and make sure that it's even, it can be a problem later. All right, so that's in. So now. Oh, I forgot to tell you. I'm sorry, I totally neglected this part. So what I did with the front is I just put it together the same way. 
I'm using a jack stand and a tripod. I'm on a horse. So anyway, uh, long story short, from motorcycle exhaust, I know you always want to start at the engine and work your way back because it's real fickle and just kind of, I don't know, like they're picky. So I just kind of do the same thing. Start at the front, work your way back. But with this hanger, um, I needed to have a little bit of play to be able to position that to make it happy. Kind of a spoiled brat. So we'll get this in there. And uh, with this hanger in place, then this won't, this other one over here isn't going to move around quite so much. Well, I'm pretty excited to have this done. I had a bunch of interruptions. I had to go pick up a ladder for one of my buddies. He bought me a, he got me a family pass to this rock climbing gym. It's one of the best in the country. For my whole family to go rock climbing. It's like $900. I'm like, holy crap. Thanks, Travis. So he's out of town, he left a ladder on a job. He's like, can you please go get my ladder? The owner's gonna put it outside. I'm just like, yeah, I'll go get your ladder. You hooked me up, I'll hook you up. Said so that, and then my brother-in-law broke down, and uh, his vehicle's about, it's a Ford Taurus. I need I say anything else? You know, it was just like one of those things, I don't want him to overheat it. So I went and picked him up with the trailer, and uh, Got that squared away. That's just solid. It's awesome. All I have to do, anyway, this job's taking forever. That's all I'm saying. And uh, I'm taking forever to say that all I need to do now is put some gear oil in this and road test it. And uh, we'll be good to go. So to get the oil in, you just put it in through the dipstick hole. It's up here at the top. Show you how that goes. So to do the gear oil, you just take a transmission funnel. If gear oil is slow, so I just cut the end of it off so that it's as big as it can possibly be but still stay in there you just stick it in where you pulled the dipstick out of set that aside it takes uh, GL5 gear oil that's just a classification by the American Petroleum Institute um, and the best one to use is 7590 if you got it that's good for all temperatures it takes 3.5 liters or 3.7 quarts garbage units so here we go. I should put a drain pan underneath of that just in case. I'm a blunt instrument. I need to finish this. Here we go. Got the dang prop rod in the way. I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. Just up and over. Yeah, electrical connections could use a little oil. Prevents corrosion, right? You can see why I gotta have a big opening on the funnel. This stuff is stupid slow. Be nice if this had an air vent too. Yay. Another way to do this is to just force it. Maybe we'll do that. I don't have patience for this. I wanna finish. So I have a cap with a hole drilled in it. Just put a clear hose in there. And then on the back side of it, you just take a Phillips screwdriver or something and just kind of twist and push. This kind of helps stretch it, makes a better seal. And you put it on the middle line because it's a little bit more reinforced there. So you get the funnel out of the way. This is just a mess. Who wants to do this? We have pneumatic tools, might as well use them. So I take a rag and I wrap it around here because the hole's drilled a little too big in the cap. We'll just set this down in there somewhere. So you hook the jug with your pinky, take your hose, stick it in the hole. And then you take your uh, air hose and just put it in that new hole that you made. You don't want to blow up the jug, you just get it to push. When you start getting low on uh, gear oil, start to see bubbles and stuff, see how it'll sputter and kind of get frothy there. And uh, it may even push back because you got so much air going into there. So take your hose or take your jug and tilt it because it's just like a soda. You know, if you're out of soda, you're toward the bottom, you tilt the cup so that the straw goes into the part where the fluid is. Now how much do I have left? I've got about three tenths of a quart about perfect. 
with a lot of transmissions and trucks there's a place where the shifter goes in you can just pour it right in there you know just being careful not to spill you can, it's easy to say it's another thing to do it uh, but you can just pour it in where the shifter is with this you saw the shift shaft so there's no way to do that because there's a there's just a sealed shaft that goes into it and there's not a lot of other venting or anything for it so at least not that I'm aware of I didn't see any unless you leave the tail off but then it's just going to spill out the back so anyway that's how I feel a manual transmission I sounded funny I'm so tired I hate being sick it sucks <laughs> Video's probably pretty boring by now. I know I'm tired of the job. Got this PCB hose. Stick that in from underneath, behind. Pinch the clamp. I didn't take this one off, but it's a little crooked, so we'll go ahead and hit that over here. better. Well, there's another leg for my centipede. Whee! Will it blend? That is the question. ABS hates it when you run the all-wheel drive on a lift or on stands. <laughs> Take that ABS, I just poked you. That's the only screaming, squealing going on now. Used to be whenever you push in the clutch, it would scream and squeal. Hope you like the video. Be sure to click subscribe. Click like if you like the video. It'll help other people find it. If you think it's helpful, if it's not helpful, then just uh, go on your merry way. So you waste your time. I tried.